Hey guys, what's going on? Zach Evnesh here, Underground Strength Gym and GetWrestlingStrength.com. So I've done multiple videos on the mistakes of in-season training for wrestlers. Uh, this could really be for high school and college wrestlers. Could also be for the middle school wrestlers, but predominantly our high school guys because they've got, um, compared to college, a college setting, they're being controlled more. They're being trained. Most of these schools have, at the Division One level, qualified strength conditioning coach. So three mistakes. Um, Want to keep it short so I don't ramble. I tend to ramble. So number one, the mistakes that these high school wrestlers do or their coaches is they stop doing things that get them strong, things that get them explosive. So it's gotta be some sort of lifting, some sort of resistance work, body weight, strength work. So wrestling comes, I did this when I was in high school, and you think it's all about conditioning, getting in shape. So what did I do? I stopped all of my lifting. I would start running for distance uh, every other night, going out for pretty much a 5K run or a five mile run, and uh, stopped lifting, and I actually felt as the season went on, weaker. And then my lack of strength and just kind of feeling run down, I remember it messed with my psychology, it messed with my confidence. So now my performance started to suffer, not just from the physical sense, but also psychologically. So what do I hear our kids do in the beginning of the season? The middle school guys started doing this as well. Running, sprinting, running, running, running. Wrestling season is the time to get your guys better at wrestling. Now, why would you send them out on 30 minute runs or running stairs or running through the hallway of the school? Use that 30 minutes to drill. And as the drilling gets better, move into faster paced drilling, situational live drilling. That is going to be the best conditioning when they're doing the wrestling skills. Let them do running on their own. The dedicated wrestlers could go out and run after practice. They could lift, they could do the training outside of the wrestling. So mistake number one is we start focusing on all the conditioning and now we're piling conditioning on top of the conditioning that comes from wrestling and you actually get a detraining effect. They end up uh, feeling more fatigued, more run down and weaker. Mistake number two is poor nutrition. A lot of kids are really trying hard to cut a lot of weight, and I'm gonna tell you why they tend to cut weight. They're ducking people, because they haven't done the off-season work to get strong, fast, explosive, packing on functional muscle, all of those things build confidence. And because they haven't done all the right stuff, now they're looking at, oh, that guy's gonna be stronger, I need to cut weight because they think that the lighter you are, the weaker you are. Well, let me tell you, I've had kids that weigh 150 pounds, 140 pounds, deadlifting 315. And I've seen plenty of kids over 200 pounds unable to deadlift 315. So what does that mean? Strong is strong and weak is weak. Cutting weight and ducking your opponent won't make you stronger. It'll only make you feel uh, de-energized, detrained. You're basically hurting yourself. Now, by cutting all those calories and or not eating quality, quality foods, what does that mean? Do you pack your own lunch or do you buy the processed fake school lunch? Are you eating at home foods that come in plastic wrappers and fake fabricated food that is made in some sort of a factory that it looks like food but it's not really food and the expiration is two years down the road? That's not going to get you strong. So the poor food that you're eating now makes you, the poor food that you're eating now makes you more susceptible to injury. Uh, not to mention that, piggybacking on what I said earlier is, when you don't feel good because you've got a lack of energy, which comes from bad training habits, bad eating habits, it messes with the psych. And a wrestler who doesn't have confidence, a wrestler who doesn't believe in himself, a wrestler who feels weak and then portrays that weakness, that is going to be a wrestler who's going to lose more often than not, especially when a match is a one point swing or an overtime match, he's not gonna have the belief in his preparation. You know, rise to the occasion is a great quote, sounds great in the movies, but the truth is nobody will rise to the occasion. They will fall to the level of their training, to the level of their preparation. And now mistake number three is this. 
I could really make it a broad, you know, brush across a broad term and just say lifestyle. But I'm gonna say, wrap it all up. It's you're sleeping, you're eating, it's when you start training hard or you're doing, getting a lot of intensity in your training, don't add on more intensity outside of wrestling. And it's a little bit tricky for some of you because some high schools have very tough wrestling practices. So those kids could come home, eat, rest, maybe hit a quick lift in the basement, some deadlifts and pull-ups, um, some kettlebell clean and press, and some weighted push-ups. Very short, effective workouts that I like to call easy strength. They don't fatigue you, but they build uh, the nervous system, the neuromuscular system to be strong and to feel that strength. Now, what about the kids that don't have hard practices? Dad picks Johnny up from practice every day and Johnny's not even sweating. You know, I can't change your coaching staff. You know, I can't change your coach. I can't make your coach work you harder or be, you know, all these resources where they could learn skills and drills online. I mean, <clears throat> opportunities out there. You now have to go and find other resources to train. So you're gonna go to a wrestling club and now you're wrestling for two hours at practice, maybe not working that hard. Now you've gotta to go to the wrestling club and put in you know, what you would consider a real workout. So that makes it very tough for you. So you have to pay attention to your lifestyle. Lights out at 11 p.m. the latest for you guys. Get the homework done. 11 p.m. lights out and no cell phones in your bedroom. The other thing is you gotta have breakfast and you gotta pack your own lunch. Eat breakfast, even if it's just gonna be one egg and a piece of toast. If you have to lose the weight, John Smith always said this, you show up to practice to get better. You're not at practice to sweat or lose weight or cut weight. So don't show up with your multiple layers trying to sweat it out because now you have the wrong goal. You're not trying to get better. John Smith told me, this is 1990, you go to practice in shorts and a t-shirt. You gotta lose the weight, then later on that night you could go get on a stationary bike, go running. My preference, and this is a tough one for everybody, is you join like the local YMCA and you swim. It has a therapeutic effect on the body. Um, it's, it, there's no pressure on the joints and it actually gives you a unique type of strength and you're not gonna get stronger from doing distance running. Swimming's gonna make you feel stronger and it's gonna make you feel like you actually didn't, didn't get destroyed from a workout. So if you could swim instead of doing all this distance running that beats up your joints on top of the beatings that your joints get. So that's the ticket there. Um, you know, we, we need to stop cutting weight and we need to stay strong all year round. So in season, you still have to lift. My program, workoutsthatwin.com, has minimalist program and uh, in-season workouts, and so does uh, undergroundstrengthcoach.com. If you are you know, near us in New Jersey at our multiple locations, then as a wrestling coach, you reach out to us and we get your team in here once a week. These workouts could literally be 15 to 20 minutes. One of uh, the big success stories I talk about is wrestler came to me senior year, told me he was burnt out, didn't want to wrestle. Uh, and I think he, uh, that senior year, took fourth in the state and he may have set the school record for most wins, but uh, we would work out 15 to 20 minutes. I would do two or three exercises, moderate weight, uh, very low repetitions. He would do some uh, soft tissue work, foam rolling, and he'd be out the door. I told him in season, no running, no wrestling club, just work your ass off in practice. And then when you come here once a week, we get the work done and then you're out. And then he had a big weight off his shoulders. He knew he just had to work hard in the wrestling room and come see me once a week. We kept it simple. So if you're a wrestling coach, research in your area, is there a qualified local strength and conditioning coach that could do great work? If so, form relations. It makes your job easier and now you're working together in a complimentary way. You get the guys better at wrestling, strength coach gets them stronger, tougher, faster. It's a win-win. All right guys, Zach here from Underground Strength Gym, getwrestlingstrength.com. Any questions, uh, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram. Those uh, links are below this video. Thanks guys, peace.